Um, I went out, I had to teach a Qigong class, I taught the Qigong class and we're there, and I've only seen a bald eagle before once in my life, and that was the day of my graduation from acupuncture school. On the way up, I saw a bald eagle. And um, that day, that morning, we were doing Qigong, and there was a bald eagle above us, like one of the practitioners, like, hey, check that out. And then, that's when I knew, I, I didn't understand the importance of that day. And maybe I don't truly understand, I still don't understand. But then that day I came home and I was with my wife and my son and my in-laws and we went out to dinner and I was telling them um, the story about the hawk. And as we're there, well, my son goes, look, Papa, eagle. And I thought maybe it was a turkey vulture and we look up and it was another eagle. Uh, the reason I'm telling you that is because I don't, I, I feel very strange I feel, I, I feel weird with the attention all around me. You know what I mean? Because in a weird way I like it, but at the same time I don't like things to go to my head. But I do know that whatever is coming forth out of me, there's a reason for it right now and it's resonance with people. So today I know there's like time to fill, and I'll be honest with you, I'm going to talk a little bit about like, you know, my study of Chinese medicine, what talks about the heart and things of that nature. But the truth is, all I'm going to be telling you are things of knowledge, things of the intellectual mind. And really, the main message that, please, uh, if you guys walk away with anything from me tonight, is let go of that knowledge. And just find out what you want. And leading up to me giving that talk, can you guys hear me on that? Yes. Leading up to giving that talk, um, I, I, never, I never was a channel, never. But, uh, one day, um, something came, and it spoke to me, and I thought I was going crazy or something. And actually, the response was, yes, you are going crazy, if you believe in what you believe the word crazy means. If you believe in that word, then yeah, by definition, you're crazy. But also, what was um, repeatedly telling me was, you need to remember who you are. That was the main thing it kept on saying. Remember who you are, remember who you are, remember who you are, remember who you are. Let me go myself and I have a recording of uh, uh, Muslim speaking. And, and then after that, the other thing was, you need to know what life is. You need to know what life. And what I realize now is that there's no technique or there's no nothing that's going to really bring it to you. They're all just guides. You know everything. And what I found here tonight was, when I moved back from Italy, from Florence, um, you know, I was always in the landscaping business. I did like video stuff on the side because I was really passionate about it. And I actually did video stuff for the New Home Metaphysical Society years ago. And this is when I first met my wife. My wife would come here and we were ready. I have like hours and hours and hours of tape for the New Home Metaphysical Society. But the funny thing is, is that and then Kelly speaking, and then, you know, even people here for my meditation class, and there are all these people here that in reality, have been guides to me. They have been, it actually makes me tear up because they've been, you know, just looking. There's Amy there, there's Chad right there, there's Mary Joanne right there, there's Kelly right there, then there's Ben that came into my life that, this kid is, I don't even know how old he is, maybe six, and he's not teaching me things, I don't even know. And then there's my, you know, my wife and Isa, my son, is the biggest teacher that I, I've had. So, and then I'm the one here talking in front of me. Like, I almost feel like I should just leave the mic alone because you guys are the ones teaching me. And usually before I speak, I try to, I need to go somewhere and I try to ground myself. So after work today, I went walking, I went to the Doorstown Cemetery. And I'm just walking through the cemetery because my, my wife always says, in Islam they say, um, if you're too happy, go to the cemetery. But if, you're too, <laughs> if you're too sad, go to the cemetery. Because it will put things in perspective. So I, I love walking in the cemetery. Besides my obsession with counting down how long they live, I don't know. <laughs> um, and so then after that, I went into like across the street there's the woods that goes to like the, the tire museum there, and I'm walking, and I see this guy, this young guy, he's sitting there with his hands on the tree like this. So I'm just sitting there staring at him. It turns out I ended up knowing the kid from town, and I'm like, "Yo, what's up?" And obviously, you know, I. I I didn't really think anything strange of it because besides he got caught <laughs> you know, <laughs> talking to the trader. And he said, you know about I, I uh, he was going off on like talking a million miles an hour. But he told me that he did he did uh, the magic mushrooms. 
I said, I never did it, but I was always interested in it. And he said, you know, I did magic mushrooms, and I touched the tree, and the tree started t- talking to me. I said, yeah, what did he tell you? And he said, that love knows no transaction. He said, there's no transaction when it comes to love. And then we started talking a little bit more, and he left. You know? And that's exactly, that's all I really want to tell you about this. You know, and I'm going to talk about different things, but really that's all I really want to talk about. Is because I feel like, um, you know, I know we talk about past lives. Some of you guys have my wife, Chad, do past life progression, stuff like that. But I don't remember, unless I do their reason, isn't there to work, but um, I don't remember. All I do know is I'm only here this one time. And, and I'm only going to be here in this this moment with you guys right now. And why not just do it with love? Because when you're with love, that's the beginning of things. You know, in the, in the Dao De Jing, in, in da- Taoism, we talk about the one gave birth to the two, then the two gave birth to the three, and then from the three came all create all, all the things, you know, and what I found uh, for myself is, why not go back to the one, you know, even with this whole thing, like, you know, remember when the secret came, became big and all these things of, I'm going to manifest things, I think it's beautiful, yeah, you're going to manifest things, but what I've come to believe, and actually I was talking about this today, is that when you, when I, if I say, like, you know what, I want to be more successful, I'm going to start feeling I'm more successful. I'm more successful in something very specific, like money. And I'm putting this in my mind. But the thing is, where is that that want of the, the being more successful coming from? And the truth is, if it's not coming from, I, I mean, when I do this, I mean the divine, it's, it's not going to last. Because where it came from, it comes from something that's not going to last either. It's coming from my ego. And I'm not saying the ego is bad, it's very helpful. But, it's coming from a place that eventually goes away. And what I found is, it's actually I feel better to go to that place beyond myself. You know, and um, a story that I was uh, lately speaking about was that there's a story of the guru and you know his wife and he has the disciple. And the disciple, I mean the, the wife says, I think it's time, you should initiate him. So you can give him divine wisdom. And the guru says, no, he's not ready yet. He's too immature yet, spiritually. She goes, no, 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 I think he's ready. I think he's ready. So he said, okay, go tell him that we're going to initiate him. Tell him to go buy the robes. Tell him to go buy the incense. Go tell him to buy all the stuff and tell him to come back. When he comes back, look at your watch and say, why are you late? And beat the crap out. So, and, you know, I might be telling the story, you know, wrong, but this is my interpretation of the message is the same. So she comes back, he comes back, he looks at, she looks at his watch, she's like, you, you were late. You know, how can you be late to your own ceremony? And it hits him. And he gets, you know, upset. He starts crying, he's upset, why would you do this, right? So a few years go by, same thing happens. She says, I think he's ready now, I think he's ready now. And the guru says, no, he's not. She says, no, 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 he's ready. Okay, tell him. Go do the, you know, the stuff, come back, beat him with your shoe. Say, you're late. Comes back. She says, you're late, and starts beating with the shoe. And then the third time, a few years pass by, and she says, I think he's ready. She says, okay, do the same thing. He goes out, buys all the stuff, he comes back, and they, you know, she beats him. But this time he's on the floor and he's saying, no, 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 please, why, why do you want to put your hand on me? Why are you going to ruin your shoe on me? You know, and then the guru said, he's ready now. And that kind of like, it messed with me for a while. And actually, it also made me think of Mother, Mother Teresa, because when I was younger, I couldn't get Mother Teresa. Because I used to say, like, why are you doing this? For what? I understand you're a nice lady, but for what reason? But the truth is, is that when this becomes nothing, you, and all you feel is that divine love, that divine, like, there's a difference between wisdom and divine wisdom. And I feel like any of you guys that channel know that. Knowing that, that there's a difference with the, with the wisdom that comes out, you know? The trick is, is to make whatever's coming through you until you can't tell whose wisdom it is. This coming through or yours, you know? And I think that's, that's the, the step. And all of you have it. Because what I found is, the first couple times what came through, it came like this. But then after a while, it started to come from here. 
And what I found is all of you guys have it. All of you. And, I, and my, my issue is I don't know how to make you see it. You know, and that's the thing, I don't know how. And what I find is maybe I'm just supposed to talk like this and maybe plant a little seed and one day it'll come. You know what I mean? But it, it's there. That's all I'm done. You know. But that story really, 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 really uh, messed with me. And what I found is, is in practice, if you do an acupuncture, um, that's kind of how you feel. Because when people are coming to you, a lot of them are coming suffering. And all you want to do is just help them. And you want to help them, whatever I can do. What, do you want, what, do you, what can I do to help you? you know, I don't know why I'm reaching into my pocket like I make your own. <laughs> but like, you, you want to do whatever you can to do to help them. And it's not because these are the people paying me. Because actually, that's the part that you think about later. You know what I mean? At that moment, it's just that I need to help this person with their suffering. But a lot of times, um, I see this time and time again. And you can ask Ben, you can ask probably Chaz, like anybody, my wife, anyone that's in that field, is that a lot of people are holding on to that pain because they resonate with that pain. And it's only when you're ready to let it go where things begin to change. You know, and sometimes you need to just let it go. In Chinese medicine, the pain is stagnant qi. It's qi or blood that's not moving, right? So you just gotta let it move. And, and we look at it on different levels. When you come into the office, a lot of times I'm working on you from a physical level. Yeah, I move this a little bit, I move this a little bit. But I'll tell you what, most times, most times, it's going down, it comes from the spirit. There's a spiritual issue going on. Almost every time, you know? And I don't, I don't know why it's like that. It's just the way it is. I mean, I, we could look at it from different ways, and I'm going to speak about that uh, later. But what I'm to, all I want to get through is maybe I'm wrong and maybe I'm unpopular by saying this about not wanting to say that I want to be wealthy or anything like that. My belief is those things will happen. You know, doesn't Jesus say himself, if you ask your, uh, if your son asks you for, I forgot what he said, a fish and you give him a snake, or, you know? I do believe that. Why would the one that created you want to make you like crap? One, it's because we're the one that, that we're the ones that are identifying that situation as bad. We're saying that it's crap. But really, it's just like any other situation. We're just judging it as so. But also, it can only change when you decide, like, okay. You know, when you decide, like, it's okay, yeah. This is the situation that I'm in. You accept it. Um, I remember when, when I was in school, I came across this book called um, uh, Spontaneous Permission. And it, was, it wasn't like a, a book, of, a narrative book. It was just case studies of people with like, cancer, you know, colitis, and all these different issues. And the whole point of it was showing all these people that went into spontaneous remission and they can't explain why. And if you look at it, they all had a few things in common. One is that they all believed in something, whether it was themselves, whether it was uh, a divine being or something. They had some type of belief in something that was more than that. The, the second one was they, all, they always had a community. Whether it was a religious community, a big family, a close-knit family, something. They had, they had something. They had where they, they resonated with other people on a specific like, vibration. And the other one, when the healing happened, is that they all came to a point of they surrendered. They were just like, all right, this is where I'm at. This may happen to me. I might die, I might, whatever. And it was through that surrendering, they got better. But when I look at it through the eyes of Chinese medicine, is that when you surrender, you let it go that she can move again. You know, everything is... is <coughs> so that's why I, my belief is um, when someone, someone like Jesus was coming across to someone and he put his hands on them and he says, you're healed. And they got up and they went. It's because they looked at Jesus and they felt like, this guy doesn't buy into my bullshit story. Sorry for my person. You know, so because of that, there's the power to wipe your story clean. Yeah, I can wipe it clean now. I can start again. I always wondered if I showed up, um, you know, where that leper was, like a few months later, would he have leprosy again? And you know what? A lot of times, I mean, just just my opinion. I don't know. I wasn't there. I feel like a lot of them probably would, you know. And the reason is, is because you pick up your, you pick up your story again, you know. 
I remember there was a kid that was coming in that had like tremors. And I, I know you, some of you guys know these stories about it. And um, actually, I didn't treat him, Grace treated him. And uh, he was fine afterwards. You know, he was perfectly fine. Tremors went away, everybody was happy. But then their parents still took him to the neurologist. And I remember asking, why did you take him to the neurologist? He's fine. And they said, because I need to know what's wrong with him. So, and I don't blame them. I don't blame them. It's because we need that story. We need that diagnosis. Why was it there? Can we be happy with it? It's not there anymore? You know what I mean? But I understand that. It's kind of like, you know, when a girl would break up with me when I was younger, and I want to know why did they break up with me? Instead of how much better it would have been like, all right, yeah, let's see what else is out here. You know what I mean? I'm just saying that to my wife, right? So. <laughs> but um, I know I'm already going off the point of my stuff, so um, I don't know. What, what time do I have to stop talking? Okay. Um, so, yeah, so the, to me, that's the biggest thing. So, when it comes to practice, and I know that, you know, Amy sent me the, um, Amy sent me the, the, the email about like, my biography and, and this and that and you know whatever was going to go on the flyer and I didn't correct that actually I didn't even need to, um, email you back at me on that I was like yeah whatever it's okay and the reason is is because I feel like whatever was supposed to go out there to attract whatever was supposed to come it will come you know what I mean and so I, I let it come because I tell you now from the bottom of my heart I don't. I'm only here just because I feel like I'm supposed to be here and talk, talk to you guys. Um, and who knows what's going to come out of it. And that's why I also, if you feel like talking and you want to say something, say it. Like, keep it open, keep everything from You know what I mean? So if you want to say something, just say it. Um, so what about, oh, about, the, about the biography? So that's why I didn't get in the way of these things because, to be honest with you, I don't really think of myself as a meditation teacher. Because to me, when I think of a meditation teacher, there's someone teaching you a specific technique or a specific thing. Um, I, off the I go off on tangents a lot. But, um, so when I told you this being started coming down, I should back up and tell the story kind of a little bit. So my wife is from Iran. When we got married, we were planning to go to Iran on our honeymoon. But it was at the time that uh, the sanctions started. Uh, when I went the sanctions. So it was tough for me to go. So we said, well, if we get married and it looks like I'm a Muslim, it would be much easier for me to go. So we, um, we looked for a mosque, and there ended up being one in Philadelphia, and we went. We had no clue, like it, takes, it was like a five minute thing. So we went, we did whatever we had to do. As I'm leaving, the guy comes up to me and he gives me this little book, and he goes, this is my teacher, this is a book about from my guru. I said, yeah, thanks, buddy. I took it. Little guy like this big, little book, and I'm a huge fan of Anthony DeMello. I'm sure many of you probably know him or something. Now, Anthony DeMello was a Jesuit priest uh, that passed in the 80s, but he was a wonderful speaker. Like, if you want to hear a good speaker and great stories, just Google Anthony DeMello. So, I was listening to Anthony DeMello a lot, especially the year I moved back from Italy. So then when I met my wife, and, and you know, this, whatever, we got married, when he gave me the book, well, in my bathroom, I had a little book of Anthony DeMello that I just kept there. And they were the same exact size, same width, everything, so I just kept them there together. Um, so I didn't pick it up for a little while. But then one day, um, you know, I'm sitting with it, and I picked it up, and I'm reading it. And you know, those feelings, it just feels like something hits you. And his words spoke to me so profoundly. And they were nothing, you know, very, very, I don't know, sometimes I feel like the things that seem so superficial are so deep. And it was interesting because I felt like if I took out Anthony DeMello's Christian vocabulary and I took out um, Baba Mehdi's uh, Islamic vocabulary or Sufi vocabulary, you couldn't tell the difference between the two. You really couldn't. So I fell in love with this Baba Mehdi. And then um, after that, I had a, uh, when I was doing my meditation class, in the very beginning, there was a woman that used to come that, you, you know, she was uh, she's like a medium and psychic and stuff like that. She says, you know, Bauer, you have a new guy with you. I've never seen him here before. I said, oh, yeah, what's he look like? He said, short guy, black, and he wears all white. I'm like, oh, Bauer, what do you mean? Because then I showed her the picture. There's a picture of one in the book. And that, that was a guy for a while. But when this 
being came to me and told me its name, it, the very first words that it, it said, it said, Baba Moyadin is beside you. Um, Archangel Michael stands behind you. Archangel Gabriel, is, no, Archangel Raphael is within you. Archangel Gabriel is around you. San Francesco de, de Paolo you know, permeates all things because he permeates through Christ, who permeates in all things. Hello, my name is Razo. That's exactly how it came to me like that. And that's why I said, am I going crazy? Because to me it sounds like something from that. But then when I went home and I, and I looked up the name, it was something connected to Baba Mayadin. So I said, oh, this is interesting. When I went to go see my, uh, my Chinese, um, you know, my Chinese medicine teacher, that's a Taoist priest, I told him the story. He said, well, why don't you talk to her? She's a Sufi. So Sufis are the mystics of Islam. Um, so I went and I talked to her and I told her the story. She goes, I don't know who you should talk to. There's another acupuncturist in Philly. So I called this acupuncturist. And she says, I know who you should talk to. There's another guy that he got illustrations for all the, like, the, a lot of the movie books. And I got in touch with him. And he actually lives near the Mazar, um, like where they bury, the, you know, the bury. Uh, the Mazar of Baba Mayadeen that he died in Philadelphia, they buried him in Westchester. So he said, I think you should go there, maybe stay there, meditate, pray, and then we'll be, be, be to me. I said, all right, great. So I did that, I went, paid my respects, went over this guy's house, and we had a nice conversation. So as we were talking, I, and he started talking to me about Baba Mayadeen and you know, the early 80s and this and that, and I said, can I ask you something? What kind of techniques did you guys use? What kind of meditation techniques? What kind of prayers did you say? He said, no, 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 Baba Mayadeen never did that stuff. I said, well, what do you mean? He said, don't worry about that stuff. First, you start to resonate with God, he would say. And don't worry about the technique. And then, and then he said, but then people were complaining. He said, yeah, but we need something. We need something. He said, okay, at 4 o'clock, we'll start to do, I think it's called Zikr, the type of prayer. So uh, the people would get up at 4 o'clock and start doing this, these practices. But it was 4 o'clock in the morning, a lot of people were falling asleep. So he said, okay, we'll start doing chanting. So he was tailoring the techniques for what the people wanted. You know? But in reality, all he was saying was, if you want to be close to God, be God-like. And my thing is, how do you, how do you be God-like? Well, I start to look at it as, well, what are the traits of God? And to me, God is all loving. So I know it's hard when you're attacked. I know it's hard when, you, especially when you're feeling down. I know it's hard when you feel sick, you know, or not well, and you're feeling these uh, feelings, you know. But the, the thing is, if you rise above that, if you rise above this thing that you call bow or uh, or anything, if you rise above that, there's something else there. And I promise you, it's so. I don't know the words. Like I, when I go to speak about it, I, I cry because all I want to do is be there all the time. And I, I'll be honest with you, I don't know how. My martial arts teacher said uh, one time, "Get enlightenment very easy." He goes, "Keep enlightenment very hard." <laughs> <laughs> and, and that's how I feel. But what I do feel when it comes, it always comes with an act of surrender. It's never uh, because I was doing some type of chant or I was doing some type of thing. And I'm not trying to not validate these type of techniques. Of course, I think they're fantastic. But I think is what's your intention of why you want to practice in the first place? You know, and that, I think it's really important. And there's no wrong answer. If you're, if you're practicing meditation because you want for health, that's, that's fine. You know, if you're practicing for whatever reason. I feel at the end of the day, like if you want to do like, uh, you know, meditate for A to do be healthy, see, whatever, you know, there's like that D, all of the above. I feel like that D is what God is. If you give in, like, all I want to do is go into that, then all of the above happens already. There's nothing more you need to do because you're already there. How can you be sick if you're, or if you're resonating with God? Yeah. And, I'm not, and sometimes I don't even think of, like, some of the most spiritual, enlightened beings I met were people that were physically ill. And I couldn't remember, I look about their people. You know, from a Catholic perspective, this guy was riddled with issues. Not only that, he was a very angry man. You know what I mean? Like, he was like pissed off all the time. But at the same time, that shows us how human it all is, right? 
it's beautiful. Like to me, I think it's beautiful. Like right now, you guys are listening to me, and I always say this you know, in my class that, but then if we're driving home and it's 6 11, you call me off and you look over and I'm giving you the finger, then all of a sudden you're like, oh, he's not as spiritual as I thought he was. <laughs> or, or am I? It's just that one, we're resonating, and now we're going somewhere else and we're not resonating. And all I really care about is that resonance. That's all I care about. And when you start to resonate, you will. You know, another thing that Baba Dean says, and I love it, he's like, never think about it as if you're getting tested. And I used to always think that when I was younger. Like, oh, this is a test for me. This is a test. He says, look at it as an opportunity. An opportunity to take another step. And now every day is that opportunity. And it's, it's interesting because I feel like the more deeper I go into my practice, the harder my, my outside life become sometimes, you know, and, and it's interesting, the more I try to break away from drama, the drama is less, but like the issues, I would say, are, are I mean, they're, they're different, and you know what the, the funny thing is, even though it, it hurts and everything else, you can still feel how it doesn't touch your core, you know, it doesn't touch it, and what I realize is, I've been going my whole life, like, actually me and Ben, we were talking about the other day, I said those ship, those videos of the Coast Guard ships and the big, like the storms, and they're like hitting these waves and they're coming down like, Psh. that's how I, I would feel all the time. You know that I'm not always, you know, you're doing it, look how good I am, okay? But what if you found out that after that, that you're the ocean, you know? And that's why I really feel that. And it, it, it's not a thing like I know it hits our intellectual mind, but I wanted to hit here. That what if you found out that someone actually was telling me the other day or something. Guru guy, I don't know, that would laugh at people when they would talk about their practice and spirit seeking and this and that. And the is, why do you laugh? He said, because it's like a, uh, a fish telling you that it's thirsty when it's in the water. You know, and, that, and that's how I feel. I feel like you guys are, are so perfect. And sometimes I see it so clearly, but I can't convince you. You can only command, my, my teacher would say, and you can't infiltrate it yet, infiltrate their, their story. I can, I can, I respect your story, but it doesn't mean I have to buy into your story, because I see you in a totally different way. But if you don't, I'm sorry, like, it, you know, it, it's just the way it is. Because you know what, I always had my story too, and I'm always kind of working on it. But then you get those moments where that story just drops. And when it drops, Something happens, and you. I want to use the word beautiful, but that's not the word that describes it. It almost, it feels right. It feels, it feels right. You know, and, and that, that's why I feel like all this stuff of like, you know, I even see that now in circles. Like someone's more spiritual than another person, or this person is this person. And then I also see people that are very so, the very very very. Um, advanced I feel in meditation and spiritual practice but then I see them do things that are so disappointing when I see it but then I realize that no they're just like the Padre Pio they're still they're still human beings they're still you know it's like God is being filtered through this thing and then God is looking out of my eyes you know my, God is looking out of my eyes through this upbringing of growing up in Warminster in a big Italian family and this and that but I'm talking from that to that person that has their own uh, story behind it. And, and then they're just like, we lay off each other. But then there's these moments where it's like you upset that you come out, and then you, you come out. And then there's no, nothing. There's no Italian guy, there's no uh, Amy the channel that does this, there's no whatever. Sorry for using that. You know, um, there's nothing. It's just there. And what I find with practice, besides the practice that we'll get into uh, at the second part of it, is, is two things. And like I said, sometimes the most simplest things are the most profound. Is one is being grateful. Because when you're grateful for things, you start to resonate with that. You start to resonate with those things. Like when I wake up in the morning, sometimes I'm very happy about being alive. Especially like, you ever have like a stuffy nose, and you're going to bed, and you're like, I get so happy when I know. I had sinus problems. Actually, what kind of started guiding me to that acupuncture is I grew up with really bad sinus problems. And it was an acupuncturist in Italy that got rid of that from me. So that was my introduction to Chinese medicine. And then, um, 
So I know that feeling of, like, can't breathe. So when I now that I breathe well, I, I make sure I'm very, very appreciative of it. And if you ever come to my meditation class, they'll tell you, I'm always talking about the breath, how great it is, how ah, it connects you to everything and this and that. Because, you know what? First of all, a lot of people are breathing crappy air all the time. You know, I mean, we probably breathe crappy air too, but, you know, go to, uh, you know, China and, um, what's that city? That's really cool. What's that? Yeah. Or, yeah. So, you know, it's just being grateful. When you're grateful, you start to vibe on that level. And then the other thing that I think is also very, very important is uh, forgiveness. And the reason why I think forgiveness is so important is because forgiveness, gratefulness is being, is gaining that awareness of something. Like, uh, I'm aware I'm here, I'm aware I'm alive, I'm aware of this, and I'm thankful for it. But that thank, that, that gratitude brings you the awareness of it. But then there's the, the forgiveness part. Because when you're able to forgive, it's very, it's a very healthy thing to do. And you know, a lot of old, we don't talk about it in Chinese medicine anymore, but a lot of uh, great Chinese uh, physicians, when you went to go see them, at least the Taoist, is you kind of did a confession before you started. You kind of get things out. You know, and again, because you start to get the chi. You know what I mean? And that's why sometimes in, in clinic, I, I, I talk to my patients, because you never know what's going to come out. You think, just like this, I don't know what's going to come out of my mouth. But it's good, because that means what's coming out is the chi that's supposed to move. And again, what you're going to see here later, is that in Chinese medicine, the heart also gets to the tongue. And you know, Jesus says to himself, don't worry about what you put in your mouth, worry about what comes out of your mouth, because it connects to your heart. What comes out of my mouth is that I'm speaking from my heart. And when I went to go speak at that place, actually I think I'm going to talk Kelly, is that after the Qigong place, um, the Qigong, I came home, um, and I took a shower, everything, they didn't eat somewhere home, so I meditated before I went. And as I was meditating, I saw this, this very clearly in my mind, this, this man, very beautiful man with, with this butterfly, and he was looking at the butterfly. And then as the butterfly looked away, it's almost as if I was looking at it from kind of afar, and I saw like this little boy, this monk, this woman, like all these different people, and they started walking to this man. And then they kind of converged in him. And when they converged in I felt it right here. And it was at that point I realized what I was and what I was always talking about. Who are you? Who are you? Who are you? I realized what I am. And it's interesting I, I relate so much with Baba Moyadeen being a Sufi because Sufis believe anybody can be a Sufi. You don't have to go well, into Islam to be a Sufi. Sufi is practicing of the heart. You know, and San Francesco of Assisi, the Franciscans, that's what he started. You know, in, 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 at least in the Catholicism tradition, is is a practice of the heart, you know, and that's something that I use a lot. And, you know, what do they use in, in Islam? When they do the zikr, they do, I don't know the words, like, which is, there's only God, among God, you know, God, God, But in San Francesco, there's the famous story of, and a lot of Catholics use it in their own mantra, is when he, the, it was like the noble or something, I know this is being big tape, so forgive me if my stereos are being bad, that he said, um, he wanted to see how holy San Francesco was. So when San Francesco was in the room during the night, he, the guy was coming, looking through the, pe the, the keyhole to see what he was doing. And he said the whole night, San Francesco was on his knees like this. Now I'm giving him the bunch of, um, oh, my God in my all, my God in my all, my God in my all, my God in my all. Same thing. And what is that? He's surrendering something bigger to himself. And I know we have a lot of attachments to the word God. Then use something else. Use no word even better. Because I know we, we tend to put like a gender on the word God. We tend to look at different things. But when I tell you everything just has God in it. It's there. Because if it didn't, it would not exist. It would So when you say my God and my all, you're bringing that vibration to that. You're bringing it there. So when I'm, you're going, my God and my all, my God and my all, you start vibrating with you, with you, with you, with you, on a different level that maybe not, you're not even aware of. You know? And we're seeing that now in, in, you know, in 
studies, you know, with heart math and stuff, you've seen those videos now of heart math, where they're showing like the trees, how they give out an energy, and how people have an energy coming out from their chest, and like, you know, it starts to vibe. You're still going in there, you know, like the, the, the Orthodox Christians, how they do the heart, uh, heart prayer, the Jesus prayer, you know, um, Jesus had mercy on me, and on Jesus. Sorry, there's a famous book called The Program, and they're just repeating and repeating and repeating, and he's talking about it, but he's vibrating from here. And really, what he was doing is meditation. Most Taoist meditations, where he's going from the heart, where in Chinese medicine they don't, because they say then you're bringing all your qi right here. Then you're bringing too much qi into your heart, it can cause problems. So, from medical point of view. So, you usually go here. Right up below the belly button, and you're done here, and you sit there, and you build up meditation, and you build up energy there. But in reality, there's two ways of meditating, right? So there's meditating when you're focusing on something, and that's building up energy, right? You're building up energy. And the other type of meditation is the letting go of energy, the surrender. My God, my all, oh, my God, my all. Oh. It's the surrender, 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 surrender. And I feel like I spent a lot of my life trying to master this. But inside, what I realize is that I'm a mystical practitioner. Is that I want to give, I want to give in to that. Um, does anyone have to say anything? Because I don't know what that right. means. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah. All right. Right then. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, I'm not close up. But does anyone want to say anything? Yes, please. Yeah, so the way I look at it, I mean, also, I don't know if I'm going to answer your question, but if I don't, just tell me. Because even when we do healing, right? So, like, you do see you see these Qigong healers, and they practice Qigong, they build up all this Qigong, and then they come to you and they put their chi in you. 